My name is Tony Shelbourne and I'm the author of The Truth About Wolves and Dogs. I've had a long career working with dogs and wolves and wrote the book to dispel the myths surrounding dog training. So today we're going to concentrate on how dogs communicate. They use all of their senses, including touch. And so much of their information comes through their olfactory system and also through a, a vocalisation. So we can misunderstand or we're just not privy to a lot of their communication. So we have to rely on our eyes, so the signals we can see. And by learning just a few of these subtle signals, we can really help to boost our relationship with our dog and also to keep them safe when they're interacting with other dogs around them. To see these in action, we've come along to a session with Dog Communication in Banstead, run by Laura and Pennell. The girls have many teaching dogs that help others who, for whatever reason, can't seem to correctly socialise with others of their kind. These highly skilled dogs of Laura and Pennell's show the socially lacking dogs how to interact in a more appropriate manner. This is not about throwing dogs together or about the teaching dogs dominating the client's dogs who are often scared enough. It's about the dogs learning from appropriate behaviour and interacting in a safe environment. So, Laura, tell me about the work you do here at Dog Communication. Well, here we work with nervous, aggressive and antisocial dogs and we help them overcome their issues. We specialise in using teaching dogs and these are dogs which have an innate desire to help dogs improve their communication skills. How do they actually do that? What, what's the process? So um, the main process is, is that we always work at the pace dictated by the client's dog in question, um, but our dogs will work at a distance initially with a very nervous dog to put them at ease, and then we'll work towards working with them individually off lead in the field or perhaps in a group situation if appropriate. Tell me about your dogs that you use. Uh, my two dogs here are Luca and Beamer. They are 10-year-old, Saluki, Whippet, Greyhound something, Lurcher, siblings, um, and they work with different kinds of dogs. Uh, Luca works with shy and nervous dogs particularly, and Beamers work with some of the more confident dogs and some of the difficult dogs. So what's the most important thing for the clients? Many owners have lost confidence in their dogs' interactions off-lead, and we need to help owners rebuild their confidence around having their dogs off-lead with other dogs, knowing when it's appropriate for their dog to meet other dogs. Um, knowing how to read the signs, if they should continue with an interaction, and perhaps most importantly, knowing which dogs their dog shouldn't interact with and when to walk away from a situation. The most important thing is always that it's a positive experience. So we work at the pace dictated by the client dog, so um, we take things as slowly as they need to be. Things have to be done safely and in a controlled way, but the main thing um, for all interactions is that the interaction has to be a learning experience and a positive one so the dogs begin to enjoy canine communication again. So what we're looking for are classic calming signals or distancing behaviour, which are one of the first levels of communication which says, I'm a bit concerned, can you calm down and back off? Common signals are things like nose licking, yawning, eye averting, slow eye blinking, sniffing and urination, but there are so many more. What we want from the other dog is to respond by changing their behaviour and offering a signal back. The interaction can then reduce to a safer level. So here, Swift, the collie, approaches but slows down and nose licks. Figures responds by arcing in from the side to greet in a polite manner, which enables Swift to gain confidence. She can then move around to sniff. Alfie on the right-hand side is nervous and starts to move away and nose lick. Luca and Figus on the left-hand side keep their distance and Figus sniffs the ground, indicating he's non-threatening. Figus turns around to communicate to Swift that she is approaching too fast behind him. She turns her head away to acknowledge his wish that she slows down. Here Hercules comes in far too quickly and Beamer has to tell him off with a short, sharp bark and a posture change. This gets Hercules to nose lick and turn his head away. Everybody calms down. Here Hercules is approaching too fast and elicits another bark from Beamer. He moves away and stops. To ensure he stays away, Beamer eye averts to indicate she needs him to remain polite. The puppy on the left-hand side looks to interact with Figgis. He doesn't react, which the puppy respects by moving away and not getting in his face. The same puppy then runs past Beamer, who turns away. The puppy keeps going as it's clear Beamer doesn't want to play. These puppies are playing beautifully and listening to each other's signals, neither overwhelming the other in the session. They trade off, back off regularly and allow each other to move. They are listening to each other so neither becomes frightened by the level of play. 
So learning some of these subtle information that we've seen here today can really help you. If you see your dogs doing it, you can temper your, your interactions with them. So even if you're just grooming them or nail clipping them, you may notice these signals as well and you can change what you do. But really it's gonna help you to build your relationship, to really let that relationship bloom with your dogs and your dogs are really gonna thank you for it. Thank you.